Hey, how's it going guys? This is Max here, and today I'm going to show you how to build this awesome Space Invader-like game with the Kaboom JS library on the online IDE replit. As you can see, the game is pretty in-depth. We've got nice movement of players and enemies going on. We've got shooting, collision detection, shields and scores, and even music and sound on this one. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy this one. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we're over at replit.com and we're going to create a new REPL over here. We're going to use the Kaboom JS template and we can just call this Space Game. Just like this. And we can create our REPL. So once you've done that, it should take you to your IDE where you've got your code in the middle, you've got your file system on the left, and you've got a nice Kaboom JS tutorial on the right, which you can check out. But for this tutorial, we're just going to need these two lines of code at the top. We're going to need the import for Kaboom JS, and we're going to need to initialize our Kaboom context. So we can delete this, and we should be able to get started now. And just so you guys know, I am going to be using this initial text based tutorial to copy and paste the sections of code we're going to need. So definitely check this out as it will help you out a lot. And you can basically copy and paste along with me, or you can simply pause the video and copy the code out like that. Either way should be fine. So within the introduction section of that text based tutorial that I just showed you, we've got a zip file that you can download in which we have an alien, a gem, a spaceship, and a nice starry background PNG files which we're going to be using for our sprite files. So in your code you've got a sprites folder which you can delete, and we want to replace that sprites folder with the one that you just downloaded. So make sure that you do that. You can, you can say upload folder, you can go to where you've downloaded your sprites and you can upload it like that. So make sure that you do that. And also make sure that you do the exact same thing for your sounds folder. Cool, so once you have your sprites, the first thing we're going to do is just add our background. And we're going to do that inside where we initialize our context. So over here you can see we need to make sure we open this as an object. And we're just setting a background, a width and a height and a scale property inside our Kaboom initialization. So if we run that, let's see what it does. Cool, we've got a nice black background. Next thing we're going to do is add our sprites. So I'm just going to say add sprites here. So we're going to use this load root and load sprite method. Basically the root folder is exactly that. It's the root folder, which is sprites. Then we load each individual sprite individually. So we've got stars and gem and spaceship and alien. Then for our sounds, it's pretty much the same thing. We've got a shoot sound, a score sound, a music sound, and an explosion sound. Cool. So now we're going to go ahead and create the main scene for our game. And a scene is basically just a group of logic in which you can add a level or a certain section of playing essentially. So I'm just going to say main scene over here. And as you can see, we're using a scene function from Kaboon. We're calling it main. We've got our layers over here, which are essentially like tags. We've got the background, an object, which could be any object in there. And we've got our UI tag, which of course relates to the UI. And we're adding our sprite of stars for our background. We're specifying that it should be our background by using the layer method from Kaboom. So if we run this, because of this go main line of code over here, you can see that we are indeed going to the main scene of our game, which is just the starry background for now. So you can see that inside our main scene over here, we've got a comment to say we want the logic of our main scene to go over here. So I'm just going to replace this comment to say we want to create our map for our game for our main scene. So I'm just going to say create game map over here. So in order to create the game map, we're going to use the add level function from Kaboom. And with the help of some constants over here to keep track of our width and height and main block size variable size, we're going to use our add level method and we're going to draw this big square 
using dashes basically as well as equal signs to represent the floor so that's what these functions over here take care of for an equal sign we want to render the ground with this color for a p symbol we want to render these little platforms over here essentially and those are going to be blue and for a dash symbol we're going to be rendering the boundary of the area okay so if we run this let's have a look so you should see a screen like this we've got our nice starry background and our add level function is successfully adding these nice little blue platforms for us right so now that we've successfully added our level to our game let's go ahead and add our spaceship so i'll just say add a spaceship over here and you can see that we're doing this much in the same way as we did the level we're saying a const player is equal to the add method of kaboom which accepts an array of values so for the sprite we're using our spaceship sprite we're starting it at the position of 100 and 200 which basically is going to put it right at the floor of our level using the body and area methods which is a pretty standard thing when we're adding a player setting it a scale of one we don't want to rotate it at all at the moment we're setting it to the center of the screen we are giving it a tag of player and just some extra values here for our score and shield values which we will get to in a little bit but if we save this and run our project we should be able to see our spaceship at the bottom of the screen so once you've got your spaceship added the next thing we want to take care of is the movement of our spaceship right so i'll just say player movement over here movement right so what we're doing here is we have an object called directions which we are setting to some constants for left we've got left and right we've got right so we're just setting key value pairs with strings in an object there then we're using this current direction variable which by default is going to be right then we're setting these on key down methods from kaboom over here where we simply want to listen for left and right key presses so on a left key press we're flipping the player just minus one on the x-axis we're altering the angle of the player slightly to make it look like the player is moving left and we're setting our current direction variable to left as well and we're finally saying the player needs to actually move and we're using a value of minus 100 for this so obviously if we change that the player will move more or less so this right on key down function over here is pretty much just the mirror image of the left one then finally we're using the on key release method to say when the player releases the key we want our player angle to go back to the position it was before and this is going to give a nice fluid illusion of movement of the spaceship essentially so just simply with these functions that we've just added you should be able to now move your spaceship left and right and it should tilt accordingly with regards to the values that we passed into those functions awesome and there is one final thing that we can make our spaceship do and that is jump so we're just using the on key down method from kaboom we're listening for an up key press and we're saying when that happens we want the player to jump with the value of 100 so you can play around with that if you want to make the space jump more but let's just test this out quick so we've got left right and we go up and we can fly awesome now what we want to do is spawn a bullet every time we push the spacebar button to create the illusion of the spaceship shooting so i'll just say spawn bullet over here so you can see that we're using the on key press method to check for a spacebar press from the player and whenever that happens we're going to be using the spawn bullet function which takes in as a parameter the position of the bullet which is basically just where we want the bullet to spawn which is pretty much always going to be at the position of the player but over here we're using a conditional we're going to say if the current direction is equal to left we want to set the bullet position to whatever it is but subtract 10 from it and then if the current direction is currently equal to right we want to set the position of the bullet to add 10 to that position of the bullet 
And then we're using this add method from Kaboom over here to add the actual bullet itself. So we're using a rectangle for the bullet. We're setting the position of it to our bullet position, which we pass in over here. We want to originate it at the center over there. We want to give it a tag of bullet. And over here, we're just passing in this bullet speed parameter to the tag of bullet over here. So we're basically saying, if the current direction is left, we want to say minus one times bullet speed is equal to our bullet speed. Otherwise, it's just going to be whatever our bullet speed currently is. So this custom bullet speed variable that we're setting basically just determines the distance as well as the direction of the bullet. And we're using our constant that we've set over here, which is equal to 400 called bullet speed. And we're just using a ternary operator to determine whether it's going left or right. And we're just saying we want it to travel at the same bullet speed. Then finally, we're going to use the play method from Kaboom. And the play method is going to play our nice shooting sound effect every time that we shoot or push the space bar essentially. And we can pass in these nice values here for volume and detuning of the sound effect, which is just going to make it sit a bit better in the overall mix of the sound as well as detuning it, which is going to give it a really cool space-like feel to the shooting. So let's have a look at this. So if you run your game and you move your spaceship around and you push the space bar, you can see that we're playing this cool shooting sound and our bullet is spawning at the correct position. However, currently the bullet is not moving. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So I can go over here and say bullet movement. And we're going to use the on update method from Kaboom here this time. We're going to target the bullet tag, which we've just created. And we're using an arrow function here, which takes in B representing the bullet. And we're saying we want the bullet to move at our bullet speed variable, which is being determined above. And we're using a check basically to check if the position of the bullet has gone past the boundary of the screen. And if that is the case, we simply want to destroy the bullet, right? because it has gone out of bounds. So if we test this out right now, you can see that our spaceship is now shooting. Nice. Now what happens if we shoot one of these platforms over here? Well, we need to take care of that. So we can say bullet collision over here. So we're using the on collide method from Kaboom, and I just want to use this auto formatter over here. Nice. So we're using the on collide method. We are checking the bullet tag against the platform tag. So we're saying basically if a bullet collides with a platform, we simply want to destroy the bullet just like that, right? So if I shoot, if I shoot the platform, you can see that the bullet disappears. Awesome. So we've got our spaceship movement going on nicely. We've got our spaceship shooting and we've got some very basic collision detection going on with our bullets against the platform. So the next thing we're going to want to worry about is some enemies in this game, right? Otherwise, the game would not have much point to it unless we have some kind of challenge. And the challenge would be to shoot as many enemies as possible, obviously, without dying. So over here, I can say we want to spawn enemies, right? So we've got a couple more constants over here. And by the way, you can move these all to the top of your file to keep things a bit cleaner. But for the sake of this tutorial, I just want to keep them at the top of each section so I can explain them. So we've got an alien base speed equal to 100. We've got this alien speed, which is incremental, which basically means that the speed of the aliens is going to increase depending on the player score, right? So we've got the spawn alien function, which we're going to call down here. And if we just go through this function, we've got an alien direction where we're using the choose method from Kaboom which basically chooses a random value from an array. So it's just going to choose left or right from directions. Then we've got an x position variable, 
which is simply determining a x position for our aliens to start off at and we're using our alien direction variable to check basically if it's left we're going to start it at zero which is at the left of the screen otherwise if it's right we're going to start it at the map width variable which is of course at the right side of the screen then we've got a points speed up variable over here where we're saying it's basically equal to the player's score divided by a thousand so that's going to increase depending on the player's score and as that increases the alien speed will of course increase right so hence the multiplication over here using our alien speed incremental variable right so we're using this new alien interval variable over here which basically is going to set our waiting time between spawning enemies so we're doing that over here we're using wait and we're saying we want to wait the alien interval which we're setting over here so obviously it will wait that amount of time before spawning a new alien and of course we're doing that with this add method over here from kaboom we're spawning an alien sprite at our correct position which we've determined above giving it a tag of alien and we're doing some fancy calculations in here to determine the speed of the aliens which are using our alien speed variables that we've created up here using our constants so we've done our spawning of our aliens function over here and we are calling it right over here in the main scene of our game our spawn alien function and as you can see it is spawning our enemies for us all on the left hand side of the screen all kind of on top of each other in an infinite loop and there is no movement of the enemies whatsoever going on at the moment so that's obviously not what we want so over here i can say enemy movement right so we're going to be using the on update method from kaboom to check the alien tag obviously and we're going to pass it an arrow function with the alien as a parameter and we're going to say we want the alien to move on the x and y axes using our speed x and speed y variables which we've created over here so that should take care of moving the aliens for us then these checks over here these if checks basically are checking if the aliens have gone out of bounds on the screen so just checking if the alien has flown out of the screen and if that is the case, we want to destroy that particular alien because otherwise we would just have millions of aliens flying around the screen and that's just not what we want, especially for performance. So if I save this, you can see now that our aliens are spawning in random positions and they are flying around the screen successfully. Awesome. So you can see that if I move my spaces around, I can shoot. But if I try to shoot one of these aliens, you can see that the bullets are going right through the aliens. So that's obviously not what we want. So we're going to need to check for the collision of the bullet against the alien to obviously kill our aliens. So I'm going to say over here, enemy bullet collision, right? So we're going to be using the onCollide method from Kaboom. We want to check the alien tag against the bullet tag. Pass those in as parameters to the arrow function. And in the case that an alien collides with a bullet, or if a bullet collides with an alien, whichever way you want to look at it, we want to obviously destroy that alien and the bullet in question. And we want to play our cool explosion sound, right? So let's quickly test that out. And you can see I killed that alien. Killed those two aliens. Nice. Now, one way we can make this even better is by adding a cool explosion effect every time this happens. So let's go ahead and do that. So right above here, before our enemy bullet collision, I'll just say a comment over here, and this is going to be our make explosion function. All right, so we've got a make explosion function, 
looks a bit crazy, but basically it's just a nested loop, which is using the wait method as well as the add method. And we are saying we want to originate an explosion right in the center over here with some nice variables over here, which you can play around with if you want. But essentially what we want to do is just call this make explosion function right over here every time an alien collides with a bullet. So we can call that here, that's make explosion. In order to make this make explosion function work, we're going to be using two custom components and a custom component in Kaboom.js is essentially just a function which returns an object as an update value and this update value will run for each frame of the object that we are passing into it. So the first custom component that we're going to create is called grow. So I can say grow custom component and this is for our make explosion function. So we've got a function called grow, which takes in a rate. We're returning an object with an update method, and we're just doing some calculations in here to determine the growth rate, basically, of the explosion. Now, the other custom component that we're going to be using is going to be for the lifespan of the explosion. So I can say lifespan custom component right so we've got a function called lifespan which takes in a time value and we're going to return the object again with the update method again and we're just calculating the timer value against the dt method which is going to calculate our frame rate for us and if the timer is greater than or equal to our time value that is passed in we're going to destroy the explosion so now that we have our two custom methods, which are going to be attached to this main make explosion function, we should be able to use it successfully. So if I run our project, and let's try shoot an enemy. You can see that our explosion isn't happening yet, <laughs> although the sound is playing but the explosion is not happening yet and that is because we haven't passed in the parameters to our make explosion function over here. So the parameters that we're going to need for make explosion, if we look at the function over here, we need to specify the position of the explosion, the number of flashes that the explosion is going to make, the radius of those flashes and the overall size. So let's pass those in. So I can go to main explosion and we can, for our position, use the alien position. So that's alien.poz. And for the rest of the values, I'm just going to use five. And you can obviously play around with those. So if I save this and test it out, and I shoot an alien, bang, we've got a big awesome explosion going on, cool. Right, so at this point, we've got our aliens flying around the screen, starting at random positions. We've got our player moving around. We can shoot our enemies and they explode if we shoot them. However, you can see that if the aliens go through our platforms or go through the ground, they are able to pass through these objects freely, which is obviously not what we want in a game. We want the enemy to die if it collides with the platform or the ground. So let's take care of that over here. I can say enemy against platform detection, right? So we're gonna be using two on collide methods over here from Kaboom. We are checking the alien against the platform in this one. In the case that an alien collides with a platform, we're gonna do our awesome make explosion function with our custom values. We're gonna destroy that particular alien and play our explosion sound. And we're pretty much gonna do the same thing if an alien hits the ground. So let's save this and see if it works. So let's see if an alien collides with a platform. Bang. 
the aliens now die if they collide with the platform or the floor, which is exactly what we want. Cool. So let's go ahead and get to work in adding our score screen and UI into our game. So over here, I'll just say score screen slash UI. So we're using the add method again. We're going to add a text that says score. Uh, we're setting it at a certain position, which is going to be at the top of the screen and at the center. And we are specifying the layer should be the UI layer. And our score text is going to also be using the add method. So initially we've got all zeros. We are setting it at the same position, but a little bit more to the right. And we are using the same origin center and UI layers for that. Let's just check that out quickly, how that looks. Cool, so that should add the score at the top of your screen for you. So now that we have our score screen successfully implemented, we want to actually update our score, obviously, every time we shoot an alien. So for that, we're going to need an update score function. Okay, so we've got update score which takes in a points value. We're adding that to the player score basically, and we're setting the text to that new score. And we also wanna play a cool score sound every time we run this function. And we're going to want to call this update score function back over, if you scroll up back to where we created our collision detection for our alien against our bullet. We can call this right under here. So we can update our score every time we kill an alien. We can update our score by 10 points. Nice. And we can just test this out quickly to make sure our score is being updated when we kill an enemy. So let's try to kill an enemy. Bang, we are updating our score by 10 points. Nice. Right, so now that we've successfully implemented the logic and the UI for our player score, Let's go ahead and create the shield for the spaceship. So I can just say player shield over here. Right, and we've got a couple of different ads over here. And we are adding to the UI these various shield pieces, essentially. So we are adding a shield bar, an inside holder of the shield, and the actual shield holder, right? So we also say we need the text of shield over here. If we run this code, we should be able to see our shield over in the top right. And there it is, we've got our shield and this cool green bar inside of it. Now, in order for our shield to actually work, we're going to need an update shield function. So I'm going to say update shield function, right? Okay, so our update player shield function takes in our shield points as a value, a parameter, and we need to basically do some calculations in here to set the initial value for our player shield. And we're basically doing some checks over here to say if the player shield is less than 20, we want to set it to red to indicate that the player is in danger of dying. Otherwise, if the player shield is less than 50, we want to set it more to a kind of yellowish color to indicate kind of a 50% health region. Otherwise, the shield's color will just be green. Then over here, we're doing a check to see basically if the shield has been depleted or if the player has died essentially. So we can say check for a player death. So if that is the case, we want to destroy our player, obviously. Then we're doing a loop inside here to use our explosion function again. We're using a little bit of a wait method here to wait only a fraction of a second before we make the explosion to kill our player. We're using our map width and map height variables that we created earlier. And we're making this explosion just a little bit bigger than the other one that we made, and we're playing our explosion sound again. 
And then finally, when the player dies, we're just going to wait two seconds and then we're going to go to our end game scene, right? So we've been working within the main scene this entire time, and we obviously need to create an end game scene for the end of the game, which we will do in just a second. So you can see we've got some empty space here we can get rid of. I'm just going to use the auto formatter here for our entire main scene. And just below our main scene, we can create our end game scene, right? So let's say end of game scene. So we're calling the scene function from Kaboom. We're calling it the end game scene. We're passing in an arrow function. Now we've got some different variables for our width and height for our map. We're adding the text of game over, obviously, because the game is over. And if we push the enter key, we're using the on key release just to go back to the main scene of the game, just like that. Now, before we could test this end game scene out, we first need to take care of the logic within our main scene to check basically whether the aliens have damaged us or have damaged the player. So I'll just say alien attack logic over here. Okay, so we've got a variable constant over there for the aliens shield damage which is initially set to minus 15 we're using the on collide from kaboom we're checking the alien against the player so if an alien does collide with a player we want to shake the screen a little bit we want to make our nice explosion again destroy the alien and we want to play our cool explosion sound and then finally over here we're going to call our update player shield method and we're going to pass in minus 15 as the default value there. So every time we collide with an alien, our shield should go down by 15 points. So now we can just test this out quickly. Let's run our project. So if we collide with an alien, our shield should go down by 15 points. Nice. So I'm just going to keep colliding with aliens until I die. Cool, so as you can see the game is now over. And if I push enter we can start a new game. So we've kind of got most of the functionality in the game at this point. But one thing we're kind of missing is another way for the player to rack up some points. And we can do that by creating some gems that are going to rain down from the sky and the player can collect them and increase their points. So within our main scene, underneath we've done our collision detection over here. I can say spawn gems. Okay, so we've got a function called spawn gem. And we've got an X position variable, which we are using the random method from Kaboom to create a random position for the gem to spawn. The gem is going to be the same size as our standard block size variable. And we're just giving it the tag of gem. So then we have an on update here, which takes in the gem. And I just want to use the formatter again here. So we're saying if the gem's Y position is greater than the height of the map, we want to destroy the gem. Then we want to run our spawn gem one more time, right? So that way our gems will spawn every time another one is destroyed. And you can see over here, we're just calling our spawn gem right in our main scene over here. So let's just run this. Oop, and you can see a gem has spawned right to the right of me and we have no way of picking the gem up as of yet so let's take care of that so I'm just gonna stop the project quickly and in the main scene I will say player collects gem so we've got a constant called points per gem which by default is 100, so that'll give you 100 points every time you collect a gem. We're using the onCollide method from Kaboom on the player object. 
to check against a gem tag. So in the case that a player collects a gem, we want to destroy that gem and we want to update our score to whatever our default gem score is, right? Then we'll wait one second and spawn another gem. So let's run this and test it out. Oops. So we've got a gem up there. Let's try get it. Ooh, we get the gem and our score goes up and another one spawns. Awesome. So we pretty much have all the main logic we need for our game. We've got our main scene complete. We've got our end game scene complete. I think the final thing we're going to need is some music for our game to make it super nice and retro and just to give our game a complete feeling. So I'll say add music over here. And we're setting a variable called music equal to play music. And we're just saying music.loop to obviously play that music in a loop. And of course, music comes from our sounds file and music. So let's try this. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. We've got a pretty awesome, well-functioning space shooter-like game made with Kaboom.js. I hope you learned something here. I hope you enjoyed it and had fun, as I certainly did. Uh, thank you so much for watching this, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.